Today you are on top of my camera for a full day of behind the scenes wedding photography at a micro wedding. Spoiler, the ceremony is incredibly challenging at this venue. If it is your first time here, I am Taylor Jackson, a wedding photographer from Canada. Most years I photograph around 60 weddings and I try to bring you to as many of them as possible here on YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe if this seems like it's something you'd like to see more of. If you're interested in seeing my shot list, there's actually a download of my shot list. Uh, it's in the link in the description below. And you can actually see at least the shots on a typical wedding that I'll go in and, and try to achieve. Uh, now, while I'm sitting in my car for a few minutes is usually the time that when I was first getting started that I'd be flipping through a book of like, hey, here are all the poses that I need to absolutely be doing. And I need to leave with all of these. Um, now you can just look at that on, on your phone. Uh, another maybe helpful thing to do is to make a Pinterest gallery of images that you like for all the specific different sections of the day. So you can quickly reference them and be like, okay, I'm gonna do a shot like this, shot like this, shot like this. Um, just when you get into the room so you don't freeze and you, you don't kind of struggle for ideas, at least if you have something to go off of, uh, it'll give you a little boost of confidence and a little bit of an idea of like, okay, so no problem. I'm gonna go do this shot of the shoes. I have no idea how to shoot shoes, so I'm gonna kind of model it after this shot that I saw. And I think that that's totally fine in the beginning. And anyone that says otherwise, don't, don't listen to them. If you're like, oh, you're copying, you gotta be your own thing now nah, like use other good images as a blueprint to create your own even if you're trying to model and this goes for photos of couples as well that if you're trying to model that exact photo that you're seeing online it's always going to come out different based on lighting based on the people based on their connection based on all of your surroundings so even if you are trying to model yourself after something very specific maybe this is a controversial opinion but I really don't see it as as a huge negative that everyone when we were first getting started we were looking at and consuming content um, maybe one other kind of high level tip is to consume good wedding photography content. So the people that you follow on Instagram, make sure they're people that are inspiring you, that are making you want to go out and do better work every single day. But yeah, definitely check out that link in the description below if you're interested in seeing at least kind of the rough shot list that I go after every single time I head to a wedding. Let's go uh, take some photos. That's the 80s sitcom open. Welcome to the wedding. Today, I have some things to talk to you about. I already started, that didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. There's a garbage truck now in the background here. Not at the wedding, at the my, my house where I'm recording this voiceover. We're here today at a micro wedding. A micro wedding is a small wedding. There are 10 people total, I believe, at this wedding. Uh, that was our requirements uh, last year. And now I'm, for what it's worth, I'm in Ontario, Canada. So our requirements are still very, very limited. Um, but at this time, people were kind of just suspecting that it was going to be a 10 person limit so they were kind of planning their weddings accordingly um so that's how many people are at that wedding you don't care about that you want you want to learn learn the wedding photographies here we go here's how you learn wedding photography step one take a photo of this path you're a professional now congratulations you're probably waiting for me to show you the image of that path, but it is not a good photo, so I am not going to show it to you, and I also did not deliver it to the client. What I am actually doing, though, is starting the gallery off just with a couple of images, three or four small images to kind of set the scene. I think it's important, don't just like roll up and start with the first photos inside, specifically if um, someone's getting hair and makeup done, like that's not the way you open a wedding album or if you're doing video as well that's not the way that you open a video um, today I'm just doing photography coverage only um, although I am rolling some random video clips around here for the for the 80s sitcom intro that you saw at the beginning of this video here's a clip of me going to the wrong wedding it's important as a wedding photographer to be at the correct wedding the <laughs> number one rule of wedding photography is to show up to the correct wedding and uh, I found it my couple is, they're not in this room, but this is just an, another establishing shot. Uh, when I'm looking for a scene like this, I don't want the building to be in the shade. If there were people here, I would want them to be in the shade because that's much better light. But to bring the entire scene together, I want this to be in the sun. Uh, it just has a better feeling in the sky. Basically, the the sky actually gets to be blue. Whereas if I'm exposing for the shadows, you start to run into kind of HDR territory. If, uh, if you're trying to kind of give way too much dynamic range and it's easier just to wait for a clearing like this. Um, at least that's my opinion. You might have a different opinion. That's fine. 
I'm not the, the all saying wedding photography champion of the world. In fact, I couldn't even tell you who that is. It might be a Jerry Guiones, maybe a Gabe McClintock. He's had a pretty big, big footprint in the industry and the way that visuals in, in weddings have gone. My struggle here is that I can get the, the basic straight on shot. That shot always works, but I'm trying to do something different. So that natural frame, I feel like kind of made something a little, a little different than what I would usually shoot here. And I think it's important to push yourself as an artist, especially if you're shooting the same venues over and over and over again, like I tend to do. Here is the reveal of the room. This is the reception space right here. And I don't actually stay for the reception today. It is just a small group of them. Uh, one thing that you will notice is that with a small group like this, I will never, unless I absolutely have to use off camera flash, that I would rather get maybe a slightly less great photo by not using off camera flash, but having way less impact in the scene, and especially with a small group. If I'm like the dude popping a bunch of flashes off, it's like very, very annoying. Um, so I do the best that I can to work with natural light, natural light in the ceremony space right now. Um, a little challenging to say the very least, um, small room. I really have nowhere that I can go. If I'm parked up here getting photos of the bride and her dad coming down the aisle, I am very much standing directly beside the groom. Uh, micro weddings, you're a little bit more part of the wedding, I would say. You're more part of the family. But I still do want to at least generate a little bit of space. Uh, this is me me pointing at a cloud that I want to that I want to cover the sun. Uh, basically, if this room is in shade, all of a sudden it's a fantastic room. I could point a flash again at the ceiling and make that like the off camera flash just kind of almost overpower the entire scene and make the light really good. But again, with such a small group, I don't really want to be that guy. Um, if you feel more comfortable with that, by all means do that. But for my purposes, I'm going to kind of work the best I can with natural light before I just absolutely have to go to something like off camera flash to just light up the entire room. This is what it is currently looking like, which is not amazing. So uh, yeah, the struggle, the struggle is real. Let's head to some easier stuff to do inside the reception space over here. We have a table that's mostly naturally lit. So I'm going to shoot with the windows behind me and my white balance is always set in this situation to something like shade or house mode, house shade mode, the more intense shade. Um, even though there are some different colored lights in the room, my main light is what I'm white balancing for. So I am on shade mode for these shots here. And then moving over to the cake, I would say that at a micro wedding, I tend to shoot a lot less details. One, because the, the volume of details are a little bit less overall, um, but also because it feels more about the people. Um, I'm here very early still. I Even though it's a smaller wedding, I'm still arriving about an hour early just to make sure that I'm in the parking lot, that I'm actually at the venue. Um, and I would rather be there an hour early, even if I just had to sit there and do absolutely nothing, than try to arrive like five minutes before and find out that, oh, they're getting married offsite or they're getting ready at a different space that takes a little while to get to. Um, again, right here, shooting shade white balance, and this is what the images are looking like. I am using my clean preset, which really doesn't do a whole lot. It adds, it, it changes things up a little bit. Here's an example without my preset. Here is the example with the preset. I feel like it is a good balance uh, as far as just kind of editing versus um, just making something that just looks artistically a little bit better than straight out of camera. Uh, if that's not your cup of tea, I have a whole, I got like 50 more presets that are all available to you if you join the members group um, and I promise that you will find one that works really well for you um, the other thing with all my presets is that they all go together very well so if I'm mixing and matching uh, the color palettes really hold together so if you're using five of my different presets in a wedding album when they're looking through the the wedding album they're not gonna feel like they're looking at like a wildly different preset that everything does go together um, but things work a little bit better in different lighting conditions Cool. And if you just want to walk towards me for, and you can just kind of look and you're just kind of walking around. Awesome. That looks really good. Awesome. And you might notice that I am shooting today on a Canon R6. Uh, if you're a follower of this channel, which I recommend that you do subscribe, hit the subscribe button and like, like this video too, if you like this video. Um, you'll know that I shoot a lot of Nikon cameras. One of the things that I can't get exactly correct, or at least that feels as good as my Nikon cameras, are backlit images like the the ones you just saw. I can get pretty close, but it's not 100% to my, my total enjoyment of the image. Um, as you can see right now, we have some beautiful fall colors to work with, and we are rolling into the first look. I also have another 
Canon R6. Uh, the 85mm f1.2 is on one of those bodies and I'm going to shoot the first look with the 85 simply because I want to have a little bit of distance from the couple. The 35 is great but you have to be real real close and during something like the first look I would prefer to be further away. Uh, 7200 also works really really well. Um, I think that the 85 is going to be totally good for me today. Uh, what I look for in a location for a first look somewhere around here would be good because we're in kind of this perfect shade but there's a few too many people kind of walking around. So if I can find a spot that's a little more secluded, um, that is a much better first look location. I've also found that my couples usually resemble myself. I am quiet and shy and introverted. So the more space I could have for a moment like that, the more comfortable that I'm going to be. So I'm going to find that for my couples. All locations come with positives and negatives. The positives here, beautiful, beautiful fall colors and very nice light. The negative negative is that there are some sunspots coming through these trees which are very very unfortunate you might also notice this as my my wedding photography shirt that i've worn in pretty much every single video that i've ever done on this channel i did it for a long time because of the nikon d5 that i used uh, when i was shooting hybrid photo video i wanted the checkerboard pattern so that i could actually get focus uh, a little bit easier because it didn't have a flip screen now that i have a flip screen i don't know I'm, i just i just wear that shirt I, I look like a waiter at a guy fieri's restaurant in las vegas but whatever i'm comfortable in it i think that it it matches most scenarios i don't wear a suit i don't wear a tie for most weddings unless it's really a black tie affair um and i find that i kind of blend enough without standing out so i don't know that's what let's stop talking about the shirt 85 millimeter f 1.2 is a fantastic fantastic lens i have been using the 85 f2 which is the is version for video i actually find it a little bit better the stabilization just kind of works out because there's is in the lens as well as the camera body in the the r6 uh with the 85 i the uh, the one two that's on here definitely uh creates better images overall but it comes at the i guess the expense as well as um just the extra weight that i don't love carrying around so i would almost rather have the 85 f2 uh for a full wedding day rather than just the um the 85 1.2 which maybe will create some some more beautiful magic images from time to time but i feel like overall the 85 f2 actually fits what i need from a lens more so first look as a solo shooter i am always getting the groom's reaction if it's a bride groom style wedding um and i did my best to place him in a space that when he turns around he's not just going to get blasted by sun uh and it actually worked out sometimes you can't control that you don't want to interrupt and be like hey can you take like two steps back go right like i understand you're in an important moment enjoying yourselves but uh just move for for better lighting i don't want to do that so i just kind of work with whatever it ends up being and I feel like that's all kind of wedding photography is is making the best that you can of any given scenario you can plan a little bit going into everything and, and you can you can do your best to plan everything if you want but you're just gonna stress yourself out and things just aren't gonna go exactly as you plan them to again a little bit of spotted light on the suit but not i just don't want it on his face basically uh, as he turns around that spot kind of disappears uh, one other thing that maybe is important to know is the limitations of your camera shooting the canon r6 i have a lot less dynamic range than my nikon z6 II, so an image like this is actually a struggle to bring back so you have to know where that limit is that if you're overexposing that you do not exceed that barrier um, because this would be not a great image if this was like the entire way that i shot the first look so that's the photo that's kind of as close as i could get i could paint detail back but it's easier just to move them back a couple of steps for the rest of the photo so be able to identify that in your camera set your highlight priority to start blinking if you're blown out highlights or if that's something that you're nervous about and um, just know that there are always ways to work a scene uh, that can work within the limitations of your camera speaking of working scenes uh, so basically the it kind of got a little shady right now and i i wanted to get something kind of backlit ish and it really just wasn't working because i'm standing kind of in the forest the forest that i'm in is kind of knocking down all the light so if i was to get them to look directly at me like this you're getting a lot of dark circles and yes you could counter this by fill flash but if you just if you identify this while it's happening and you get them to face each other you can easily fix a lot of lighting situations just by the actual posing or the rough posing uh, if you're interested i have lots lots more videos about how i pose and then on the member site there's actually my full introverts guide to wedding photography posing which is kind of my walkthrough of how i go about posing um i'm not 
definitely I'm not moving like all of their limbs and making them do very specific things. Uh, it's more of just kind of going for a walk and making people as comfortable as they can be within just a couple of minutes. Um, it is a little bit easier at an engagement shoot because you have full range of motion uh, with a dress like this. You do kind of limit some of the opportunities. Um, I find that a lot of my couples get very relaxed when they're walking and holding hands. So you'll see that I do a lot of those photos, but that is not a photo that I want to be doing out in like grass or dirt or anything prior to the ceremony. After the ceremony is the time that I will actually maybe talk to them and see what they're comfortable with and wherever that level of comfort is. If they're cool with taking a walk through some grass, like that's awesome. But that is not a thing that I would make them do before the ceremony, even if they're up for it. I'm just kind of like, well, we'll just do that shot after the ceremony, like just, just in case. I also chase my couples around uh, for lack of a better description. I want them like whatever I can do. It's specifically hard on a, a micro wedding day. I want them to just enjoy their day and to just do what they want to do. Like if, if I could shoot this entire day as a photojournalist, that would be kind of my dream. As a wedding photographer, there's always some sort of posing and some sort of control that you kind of have to put into the scene. Uh, but my preference would be that everything just kind of happens as it should happen. A few kind of smile, face the camera for photos. Um, but other than that, I would want everything to be candid and natural. I feel like as a sales and marketing thing, um, that is also something that I very much lead with in wedding or in uh, consultations as well as I guess most of them are just phone calls now it used to be in-person meetings uh always comes up I would say if anyone ever asks me to define like what is your style which is the question I hate the most um, I just kind of revert back to being like oh I'm just like a candid photojournalist that knows how to pose if something's just not feeling exactly right and that is something that a lot of my couples really seem to just kind of enjoy and that's what it seems like most of them are looking for um, speaking to myself and if you're marketing to yourself as a as your ideal client that is something that I would probably like to hear too if I was on the other side of the the figurative table or other side of the Skype call or other side of the, the phone call. This is Marty. Marty is the officiant. Marty married my wife, Lindsay, and I in Mexico a couple of years ago. Uh, he's a good dude. That's all I'm going to talk about about Marty right now because you're not here to, to learn more about him. Uh, what it is important to do, specifically at a micro wedding, a smaller wedding, is to talk with the officiant and figure out what restrictions they have, if any, or to just make a good open line of communication like, hello, nice to meet you. Uh, and that way they're going to be just a little bit more hospitable to what you need to be doing as a photographer. Uh, I like to kind of just talk about the fact that like, hey, it's a tight space up here and see how they kind of handle that because that could either go like, yeah, like wherever you need to be awesome, like you're a professional, um, like maybe some some officiants might be like don't use flash if it's in a church or something but for the most part by at least opening that dialogue you can kind of see and get a little bit of a litmus test of where they're at with their thinking and how comfortable they are with you just literally being unfortunately kind of on top of them at least when people are coming down the aisle because it's uh you're, you're gonna be real close big wedding or small wedding, I do my best to get one image of every single person that's at the wedding. A micro wedding, that your life is pretty easy when it comes to that, that everybody, with the exception of two people right now, are in this room. Uh, I have a 35 millimeter lens on my camera right now, and I'm pretty happy with everything that I got. Um, you could use a zoom in a situation like this. Uh, you'll often see me on my 70 to 200 whenever I'm doing cocktail hour, and that's simply to stay out of the face of everyone. Like Obviously, I'm a little bit, a little bit closer to the, to the moms right here. Um, they don't seem to mind because I'm a very known entity that I've been in this room. I've been with them for a little while now. Um, if it's a different style wedding, I don't want to just be running up to a group of people that maybe they're across a dance floor or whatever. Um, I feel very uncomfortable. I feel like I make them very uncomfortable. If I can creep on them a little bit with a 7200, uh, I feel a little bit happier with that. I can get more natural and real photos. Again, going back to that photojournalism, uh, that that's what I would love to be doing. I feel like that helps me um, it, unlock a a little bit of that photojournalism of the day um, and gets me much better shots than if I was way, way, way back shooting with um, like this 35. Today, 35 works well. That sun's definitely going to cause some problems uh, poking through the window there, but that's, uh, that's, that's life. And sometimes that, that sunburst works out really well. Today, it, it didn't work out so well, so I'm not even going to show you the photos, but I, I tried it. I, I, I saw it. I tried it and it didn't work. 
Another thing maybe to mention, um, even though this is primarily lit from the sun, there are still some kind of orange light bulbs in the room. If you're ever in a very, very challenging mixed lighting environment and there's just nothing you can do within reason to make it look as good as it, as it actually does in real life, uh, I have found that going into black and white works very, very well. And if the couple ever asks, like I, I'm happy to give them the color photos as well. Usually if I'm delivering something, I'm giving them both the color and the black and white if I do choose to convert it to black and white. But if it's really challenging mixed lighting, specifically on faces, or if there's kind of those like harsh pot lights, changing things to black and white can save some images if the moment is very strong. But that is one of the only times that I will ever deliver only a black and white image. Uh, other times I'm always giving them both. A larger wedding, usually my second photographer would be out with if, um, if there's a bunch of people waiting to come down the aisle and they're in a different room. Typically, my second would be out there. I also have my second out there to get any sort of coming out of the limo shots, that style of thing. Uh, today, micro wedding, I'm the only person here, so I'm kind of doing all coverage. And I know that I'm set up for the ceremony room, which is currently still in hot, bright sun. Uh, but spoiler alert it does get a little bit better for me and i kind of saw that there were a bunch of clouds coming in so i wasn't too worried about actually setting up an off-camera flash because i did see that this was going to be a thing that was going to get better um maybe spend some time looking at clouds and seeing how things are moving on the wedding day um, because trying to photograph only in this light i definitely would have needed something that was um, popping off the ceiling that was actually really powerful like one slash fourth of uh, a pop i use the godox or the godox uh, v1 currently and that flash I love because you really don't ever find the end of it if you're doing one slash fourth pops of it you can just shoot frame after frame after frame after frame and you'll never um, hit the the timer or whatever it is the it won't need to charge it just keeps going and I love it it's big lithium-ion battery I do highly recommend that flash although there might be something um, that is coming out in a couple of weeks that I might be very very interested in uh, in showing you guys that might be my new speed light but more on that in a little bit I will straight up say that this is the most challenging room to shoot a wedding in that I often shoot in. Uh, this direction though, so if I'm shooting into the sun, the images, as you can see, actually look pretty good. The struggle is when he goes on that side and now all of a sudden he's just staring straight into the sun. You can see the clouds in the, in the window there. Um, but when he's staring at the sunset, it's just not an ideal situation by any means. If you are ever faced with a situation like this, know that there are always the best images you can take within this situation. So basically right now over my shoulder, I can see that Marty, his face is actually in the shade. So I'm going to grab that photo while I know that he's in good lighting. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab this photo of one of the other guests. And uh, I'm going to look over here and there's not a whole lot that I can take. So right now, um, there's kind of a limit to the to the best photos that I can take. Uh, so I'm getting those while I can and then hoping that everything else works out. Um, and I really thought the clouds would be here by now, but they're not. And you're mounted on my camera, but my camera is very much against my chest. And I'm trying to make myself as small as possible in this situation, which is another reason why I'm not using like off camera flash so that I'd have a transmitter up top or I'm not using something like a 7200 that's a very large lens. I'm trying to be appreciative of the situation and trying to, to not stand out too much, even though I, I super clearly am. So I can see that they're in the sun right now. And as soon as they start to step, they're in the shade. So I'm going to grab all my photos from when they are just perfectly here in the shade, because I know that as soon as they get into the sun, that that didn't actually ruin it too much but um as just kind of you can if you have a second photographer actually maybe that's a uh, something to to mention here that if you have a second shooter or even if you're with somebody else or you can get one of the guests to do it uh you can ask them to basically do the walk that the couple or that the the bride and her dad did there um, so that you're able to kind of test it out and you can test out your autofocus and make sure that it's tracking properly and that they're not going to just find themselves in a really bad piece of sun like they are right now. Um, you can test that and it's very easy if you have a second photographer or an assistant with you. So that worked out pretty well, although I am very much struggling with the crop because I'm standing right in front of the groom. Um, so I'm a little bit more off to the left than I would have loved to be to make an amazing image. But um, that's, again, just kind of working within the bounds of the scene that you're given. As you can see, my dream is coming true. Things are getting a little bit cloudier. To give an example, this is what the entire scene looks like in the sun versus this is what it looks like in the shade so 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 much better and nothing you can really do to fix that like if it was just a sunny day it's just going to be a sunny day and you just kind of get all the shots that you can 
with the shade though it's not all all amazing and just makes my life easier um moving into lightroom here so as you can see uh val very well lit and like that nice soft box through the window now uh maya a little bit darker in the face because basically what's happening is that all the light is hitting that that black slash the brick wall and you have to brighten her face up a little bit in order to create some sort of balance. You don't want to overdo it though, because you want the natural scene to exist. Uh, so what I actually do is I bring contrast down. So I, I'm actually in the, the little paintbrush adjustment there. Um, I bring contrast down and shadows up. Uh, so that's kind of before and that's after. Uh, and then I paint that in. If I need to bring in a little exposure, again, adjustment tool just for her face there. But I feel like that is close enough to what I want to exist. Um, also, if you're noticing the background, the, there's so many straight lines. Um, if you come down here into transform and you actually hit auto, a lot of the time it's going to do a pretty great job of that. So if you're like, you're, there's lines in the background, they're bothering you. That will do a pretty good job of making everything kind of those perfect 90 degree angles for you. Because of the room, I'm attempting to get kind of as far to the right as I can, or I will be in a second here, um, and trying to get at least a few good photos of Maya. If I can't get them from back here, I will likely kind of go up front and just do something really quick. But as you can see, if I'm up front, I'm very much like three feet away from her. So I don't really want to try to be doing candid photojournalism from that distance. It's just not possible. Uh, so I can probably get away with the shots that I need from the back corner here. And this is one of those examples. Is it the greatest photo I've ever taken? Is it perfectly balanced? I don't believe so. But what it is, is kind of the best that I could do within that situation without really causing a lot of awkwardness in that situation. So I want the scene to exist. I don't want to make things more awkward. If I was three feet away from her, that would have been pretty awkward. And she probably would have remembered that when looking at the image. But this is about as far back as I can kind of stay to, to make things, I guess, feel, feel natural in memories. Also, a few new things uh, that don't really happen at normal weddings, I guess, and happen a lot more at micro weddings, live streams to, to other family that can't be there. Uh, so make sure you include them in photos. If it's like a bridesmaid or somebody that couldn't be there, I like to get the FaceTime uh, like photo of all the girls together or all the guys together or whatever with their, their friend on FaceTime that's uh, maybe stuck in an, a different country. Uh, we're pretty close to the US border, so I've noticed that just so many family and friends can't make it because they're from Michigan or Ohio or whatever, um, which is a bit of a bummer. So um, do my best to include them in the images as well. Coming into the first kiss, usually what I'll do is I'll actually pre-focus and get my camera set up, and then I'll use a little flip on the, the lens to turn to manual focus so that nothing can go weird and I just don't move. Um, this is another thing that you can talk to the officiant about in the beginning, that with, I guess, most of the ceremonies that we have in Canada, there's typically, I would say, they either we, we sign the license and that's part of the ceremony. Um, so usually they'll kiss after that, but sometimes they do before that. And if I know that just prior to the actual ceremony beginning, it makes my life just a lot less, uh, a lot of anxiety kind of disappears if I know when that's happening, because uh, it's a pretty important moment. And especially at a micro wedding when you're there alone, um, everything comes back to you. To show you a few images, if I am getting a shot like this, that they're very, very mysterious in this shot, I want to make sure that I get one to at least compliment. Um, the way that the lighting is falling off makes that the first image a lot more mysterious than normal. Um, so I want to compliment that with something that they can actually see their faces in. Uh, a few frames on their way out. And then we're back into the kind of the cocktail space that we were in prior to this that is a little bit more challenging. Uh, I will from time to time direct kind of people where to stand, specifically it's, if it's for a receiving line or something that's really set up. Um, I will usually put them in the best spot and typically for receiving line, I'll actually put the, the, best, the best light on the person that they're talking to. So in this case, I would kind of have them stand by the window and I'd let everyone come by. Um, as you can see with the window light, really not 10 out of 10 on them, but I'm able to get some good candidates of everyone else. So I'm just gonna use my black and white trick because there really isn't a way to, now that the lighting is so, it's two different colors entirely almost, um, as far as outside the lights really come down and inside everyone's gonna be nice and warm. Um, isolating people in single light sources, best case scenario, if you just can't, and it's just the documentary coverage of the day. Um, if you do capture a good moment, make a black and white if it just doesn't feel right in color. Now, there are a few different ways to do family formals. We have this room that kind of can work. Again, very, very side lit. Um, you could bring in a flash or a softbox to try to get some sort of fill coming off that, that brick line if you wanted. Uh, or you can go outside. I do my best to always go outside because it's, it's by far the best always, um, or most of the time at least. But if it's cold out, 
I kind of I don't want to just force everybody like, hey, we're doing photos outside. I want to at least maybe try one in here, um, especially if somebody suggests um, like, hey, we should do photos in here. I don't want to just be like, no, we're doing them outside. I'll do my best to at least get one or two. Um, but as you can see, very, very side lit. Um, and people on the left hand side, if they're looking away from the window and people can't really get in a full full line. So it's not the best situation. Uh, so at that point, once I've tried it, if uh, I've kind of humored whoever might have said that, uh, at that point, I can suggest that we go outside. Um, it's just a more, it's an easier transition that hopefully doesn't make anyone hate you straight up um, by just saying like no I will not take your idea and we're gonna do mine instead um, and especially with a small group like this it only takes like a minute to, to test something like this so now that we're outside, uh, I'm doing my best to shoot at a lower f-stop. And if you want to get everybody in focus and you're shooting at something, you, you could even shoot something at like f1.4. As long as everyone is on the same focal plane, which means their eyes are all kind of level um, across the line, everyone will be in focus. Um, I'm specifically shooting at a lower f-stop because I don't want all the detail of the building in the back to exist. Um, as you can see in this image, it is a little bit distracting specifically Val the groom's head kind of in the in the white pillar I don't love that so I'm doing my best to kind of move myself around the group to kind of make the best composition so nothing is coming out of anyone's specific heads for groups like this I will always do a vertical um, but I find that a vertical frame the people aren't really as large as they could be in it usually so I'll follow that up with a horizontal frame with faces a little bit closer um, you can crop wherever you want I kind of find that half thigh if you can if you can crop half thigh kind of across everyone I feel like that feels like the most natural it's always gonna be a little bit weird people are different heights and whatnot but I find that's kind of my go-to spot for the horizontal frame and now that the light is so much better out here I'm actually gonna do a few photos with the couple again kind of just to close off I feel like it's also kind of natural uh, as a segue for me to be leaving at this point as well um, if the entire family's here and I'm like I guess I'm done bye it's a little bit weird if I can release the family back to cocktails and I can just finish with a couple it's at least a little bit easier as my socially awkward self to to say goodbye in that situation um, I feel like it's kind of it more tapers off it's a I don't know if that matters to anyone but I have found that it's easier for me to do that okay. and now that the ceremony is done and if they're comfortable walking on grass I'm gonna I'm happy I'm happy to have them walk on grass now um, trying to frame out the the wood that's on the side and the fireplace to kind of put them just basically in the center of the house there um, and then have add a little bit of movement to it I think that movement again I'm trying to kind of force these photojournalistic shots and I find that just walking holding hands is usually the easiest way to do that engagement session I'll have them have an arm around each other but wedding day with a dress like this um, definitely don't want their, their feet that close together you're gonna, you're gonna find yourself uh, in some problems especially with some green stains on grass and also, uh, the most important image of the entire wedding is just the couple smiling, facing the camera full length. Uh, make sure you get the shot. I feel like I mention it in every single video, and I feel like I just want to hammer it home one more time. Uh, get the wider shot, get a little bit of a closer crop as well. Um, just make sure you get the shot, because if you do not, this is like the shot that you're going to hear from every single family member looking for. Like, hey, can you relook through all the, the photos to make sure you got this super basic shot that you should have got? Um, so definitely 100% of the time like every single wedding that that is the frame that you are there to get for other frames that i always look for at every wedding uh link in the description to get my full template for at least the shots that i normally get another one bride alone groom alone bride behind uh with f dress fully laid out um those are all on the checklist so link in the description go get that checklist um it's it's a good starting point i would say even if you want to share um put your own logo on it and, and share it with your couple uh and make sure that like kind of they're on the same page you can also get them to fill out the specific family photos that they would want as well I find this to be incredibly valuable as far as again myself as somebody that doesn't really like to yell and scream and get the attention of people if I can have a list and I can give that list both to like I'll have what myself but then to also give it to a bridesmaid that kind of knows who everyone is and they can help me round up people um, a day like this doesn't really matter but a bigger wedding day it is just it's so helpful to have so um, something that is definitely worth doing the more that you can plan going into the wedding the easier it's usually going to be and and specifically, the more on the same page you're going to be with your couple, which means that expectations are more aligned. Um, so they're not going to be expecting you to do something that you just like didn't do um, because you you were like talking about stuff. And hopefully whatever that random request is, it came up prior to the actual wedding day. And um, hopefully you'll never get in trouble that way. That is all for today. Thank you so much for listening and watching. 
this behind the scenes micro wedding. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to help out as much as I can. And I do get most of the notifications. So if you, if you have a question, even if you're watching this video six months from the posting date, I'll still see it and I can uh, get back to you. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Don't forget to subscribe and go grab that checklist in the description below.